Hey everybody, Sam from Crash Course Hammer here. Uh, I thought I would do a quick update video on the uh, Do It Yourself Bayonet project. It is progressing well, um, although there have been a few challenges, uh, which I'm sure you'll be pretty interested to check out. So let's get stuck into it. So let's take a look at some of the pieces here. Um, as you can see, the whole point of the experiment is just to use things that you can walk down to your local hardware store and pick up. So I quite literally picked all these bits up from <laughs> down the street um, at our local K&D. Now we'll look at some of the challenges in just a second, but to suffice to say, here we have just a sort of standard thinner pipe, okay? You'll notice I've changed it a little bit go into that in a second. We've got a thicker pipe that's more like a shotgun barrel, although again you can see that I've sort of modified the end. We'll cover that. Otherwise we just have normal bolts and screws. Okay, there's a bit of a galvanized pipe fitting, you know, there's a bit of this, washer, and one of these. So I will put it together and you can see what it looks like. All right, so we have uh, have the bits attached to the bayonet, but you'll notice there are one or two things missing. First, let's just have a look at the uh, actual proof of concept. So we have the plunger here at the tip, or what is the sort of widened end. I would prefer one that's much larger than that, but again, this is just a proof of concept. Down the other end, we have that screw and the washer here, okay, and in the middle we have the uh, what will eventually be the sort of throat. Now, as you can see, the idea being quite simply that when it, if I tip it up, okay, when it's in the barrel, the barrel comes up along here and it comes up over this, this then screws down into the top of the barrel, okay, it's as simple as that. You then load a spring at the uh, end of it, and the spring sort of comes up over this nut here, okay? And what you end up having is this sliding motion. So it comes down, like so. So it comes out, boom, just like that. And when it is depressed, that is to say when it is pushed against someone, in theory, it will go back down, okay? So, boom. Oh, boom, okay, and you can do it quite firmly, and it won't come out. Um, best of all, best of all, in order to get that screw to actually go in, uh, if it'll quickly focus, all you have to do is sort of hammer around the throat of the uh, pipe, which is a bit more apparent on this one. You'll probably just see how it's a bit hammered around there. This enables you to actually screw it in without needing any screw device. Now, like I said, there are a few technical problems. Again, remembering, this is all off the rack, all off the shelf. This is just down at the local hardware store. I walked in, I picked up pieces that fit together, and I walked out. So there was no ordering online, there was no uh, specialty plumbing, there was no specialty fabricators or anything like that. Just go to your local hardware store, go in, pick up the bits. As a consequence of that, <laughs> the stuff isn't meant to do what I'm, we're trying to make it do. So, what are some of the problems? Well, this essentially works, okay? It slides, it can't go all the way in, and it can't poke all the way out. Alright, fair enough. This does in fact fit in to the barrel, alright? Believe it or not, just. But, the immediate problem is, is that the washer in this particular case is a bit too large. Okay, so it just won't go down the throat of it. Um, so all I'm going to do is sand off some of the uh, washer there, and that'll fix that problem. So once this goes down, in theory, what's meant to happen is this should sit inside the main barrel here, right? So this should just kind of stick on. The problem is that this is just that bit too large to fit in here. I have hammered this down as much as I can, so you can actually see that it's been, if I get it to focus, 
you can see that it's been hammered. Okay, so this is completely wrecked for screwing it in now. Um, but I'm just going to work with it, see what how far we can go. And you can also see on this one, I tried to uh, sort of open up the end of the barrel in the hope that you could just kind of force it down. But thus far, that hasn't worked. It's proved to be a bit more difficult than anticipated. Um, subsequently, another point of this exercise is that this is all done with hand tools. Okay, there are no power tools involved in this process whatsoever. So I'm using a hacksaw to try to get in here. I'm trying to hammer stuff <laughs> around the uh, around the sort of neck of these in order to figure out a way that this can kind of screw in. This one isn't so good, the other end is. Then of course we have fittings like this, which whilst they quite happily go in, okay, like so, the pipe here doesn't fit inside here, okay? So I have to sand it down and you can just see that one of the things that's stopping it is that seam there. You can just see at the bottom, okay? So I'm trying to sand down the inside of that just with sandpaper. Um, in theory, this is meant to go inside of this, which I will show you now. So this is meant to sit inside here so that what you would have is this kind of uh, piece. Now you might say, well, what's this for? Well, you have to remember that when you have a very long, thin object like that, if this is all that's at the neck here, then that means that this and all the length of this will be basically pulling on it when you use it. So essentially, this acts as though it was the sort of grip length portion of a bayonet, uh, which would, if it was an actual bayonet, be fixed under the barrel, but in this case, it's fixed inside the barrel. So what's meant to happen is that is meant to go in here like so, okay, which then basically makes the piece like we saw in the previous video. Um, only problem is, is that it doesn't fit. Again, it won't go down in here. But the funny thing is, is that, if I can do this with one hand, oh, I'm a magician, look at that, is that, <laughs> is it fits this way. It fits this way completely fine, which is exactly what I want. And then, better still, it goes straight in. And, better still, if I can just get this to fit inside of this pipe here, that would mean that I could, you know, have one sort of way of setting it up. But unfortunately, unfortunately, this piece here doesn't fit in the direction I want it to, or really need it to. So, assuming that the handle grip section actually managed to go on the um, sort of inside of this, okay, assuming the bayonet or the plunger actually managed to slide through this and assuming that the washer uh, was sufficiently small as that it could run up and down the barrel here as well as the barrel itself being sufficiently large that the actual thread here could go down <laughs> inside of it what you would have is essentially something that looks like this okay except this would come out a little bit more you can adjust the bayonet length, basically, for your needs, which is pretty cool. So if you have a later model that has a shorter one, you can use that. If you've got an earlier one that has a longer one, you can use that. Obviously, um, since I'm in Australia, the one that this is kind of modelled off is, um, um, I think, oh, what will it be? What is it, the SMLE Mark II or whatever it is? Eh, can't remember. Just head over to British Muzzle Loaders and I'm sure he can tell you. But... Here, all right, as you can see, the idea is that when you stab the other person, there might be a big leather thing on the end of this, although traditionally there seems to be almost like a, um, uh, a sort of welded um, disc, a hollow welded disc. But basically, you punch someone with the end of it, boom, it retracts all the way in, doesn't go any further, and then the spring, which is loaded on the inside there, would then shoot it out. Subsequently, because this length would be underneath here, along with some of that. That would actually give you some decent sort of um, leverage, so you could actually hit each other's bayonets, and ultimately, I guess, each other, with the uh, barrel here. Um, now, I actually don't know if this galvanized off-the-shelf 
metal is going to be sufficiently strong when it actually comes to testing it. I have a horrible feeling it's going to bend, but for the sake of an experiment and for the fact that I could go out and pick all this stuff up and basically with a little bit of elbow grease I think I can get it working for under like, what is it, what was it, probably, probably I'd say maybe less than 50 bucks, you know, again, I had to buy sandpaper and a few other tools. So this is actually probably only, I don't know, what, like, what's this? Like maybe 10, 20, you know, maybe 30 bucks all up. You can have, if I can get this to work, an off the shelf, ready to build with no power tools or special something working, bayonet plunger kit. And just a quick little, uh, guide on to how long it's probably going to be at the end uh, once I'm done building. At the moment it doesn't have a stock on it and yes those are Ugg boots and tracky dacks. I'm at home, I'm trying to do stuff. Um, but essentially this will be more or less once there's a stock on it um, how long it'll be. So hope you guys enjoyed this little, uh, little uh, adventure and uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Let's hope this experiment works. Till next time, catch you later.